So there are quite a few of you guys have asked me for the six months follow-up to the Serbian chef knife that I reviewed several months ago. Well, six months ago. Ask and... And you shall receive. So the cat's kind of out of the bag, so I'm going to go ahead and clear things up for you guys. Now, Kalina and I are no longer working together. They actually sent me this knife several months ago. Uh, they sent me another knife. Uh, which is their Kirisuki or slash their Damascus knife. I pushed out a not so colorful review about that knife. They didn't like that at all. They actually asked me to pull the review or else they're not going to work with me again. And so I respectfully declined it because as a as a content creator, it is really important to me to be transparent, be honest, and have integrity, especially because we have the influence over how you guys spend your money. So my audience is my highest priority because how you can influence someone to spend their money, it's a big deal, man. So I take that very seriously and I refuse to take down my review and they decided that we are no longer a, a good fit for each other and we went our separate ways. Uh, I have no hard feelings against them, but I feel like that's a very shady move on their part and I don't support that kind of behavior. So we went our separate ways. Now, let's go back to the knife. Let's go ahead and just start this back off on a more positive note, guys. Now, the positive thing, the pros of this knife, is that it is a very, very enjoyable knife to cut with. It's really fun to cut with. It's a novelty knife. And it's a very cool looking knife. I do have to admit that. I think the Serbian chef knives look super cool. And that's really kind of about it. Well, one more thing. One more thing. I found out that it was a, it's a 1095 high carbon steel. And the nice thing about 1095 carbon steel is that it is a very very easy steel to sharpen and that's really kind of about it on the pros list I don't want to just kind of keep going on and on about you know this knife is so fucking great this knife is pretty average guys I feel like this knife has a lot of hype built up around it through a lot of social media marketing and things like that so I feel like it's overhyped and when you overhype a product you kind of set the pedestal really really high and when you set a pedestal high, it just gives it a lot of room to disappoint, right? But I've had this knife for six months, so my expectation for this knife wasn't like all the way up here. It was a pretty average expectation because once I've received it, I saw what it is about, I know I will have to adjust my expectation for the next six months to give this a more fair review. Even with those expectations, there are quite a few cons for this knife. The first con being the pricing, okay? Because there's so much hype and there's so much marketing built around this knife, there are a lot of companies trying to sell this knife for an exorbitant amount of money. Kulina is charging $90 for this knife, $87.99 to be exact, okay? And then they want to charge you another $24.99 for the letter sheath. You can find that exact same combo on AliExpress for 40 bucks. Let me repeat that for you if, you if you think you're hearing it wrong. No, you can find that exact same combo with the letter sheet for 40 bucks on AliExpress. I'll show you. They wanted to charge $24.99 for the letter sheet, guys. I mean, that's kind of crazy to me. Now, the pricing being one of the biggest thing, it's like for 40 bucks, I wouldn't mind paying that for this knife because like I said, it's an enjoyable knife to cut with, but for 90 bucks, that's way too much. Like the fit and finish of this knife for a $90 knife is crap. Like I'll just come out and say, I know I've addressed some of the issues with the fit and finish in the last video and a lot of you guys have commented <coughs> saying, well, the knife is designed this way and you know, yada, yada, yada. No. I don't believe that at all because that's just kind of, it seems like it's justifying a knife for low quality, okay? For $90, you should have a knife that is really, really nice. The tang, it's so wavy that it looks like it's fucking belly dancing, guys. It's bad, man. Like, it's so wavy in there that when they fit the handle and the scales on, they actually had to fill it with additional black epoxy just to fill those gaps. And even after they try to fill those gaps, there's still gaps in the front. The gaps in the front is an even bigger issue because when you're washing the knife and water gets in there, it starts to rust. And once the tang starts to rust, 
you have a pretty big issue on your hands. You're, and people are saying, oh, it's supposed to be designed this way. You don't design a knife to have rust issues. I'm just telling, I'm telling you how it is. Like a lot of knife makers hand hammer their knives just like this Serbian chef knife claimed to do. And you're not going to push out a knife that is warped and blade is, is so warped. It's, it's skewing toward the left side by quite a bit. Like it's bad. Like I'll show you guys a different angle of this so you can see it. But people that take pride in their work are not going to push out something like this. Okay, this is a quality control issue. This is not designed to look like this. Just to throw an example out there for you guys to know what a $90 hand hammer knife can look like. Check out my Forge to Table Gyoto video. That knife is also made in China. Okay, they're very proud of it. It is hand hammered. It comes with legit Japanese imported VG10. Has a blacksmith finish, this Kurochi finish, kind of like this, with a suit on the outside. And that nice fit and finish is on point. Like seriously, that, that knife has really, really nice fit and finish. And it is $89.99. So basically the same price as the Serbian Chef knife, and you do not have any of the fit and finish issue that you see compared to this Kulina knife. Let's go ahead and move on from the pricing and the fit and finish of the knife because I think I've beaten that dead horse enough. Now let's talk a little bit about the daily maintenance of the Serbian Chef knife. I think the Serbian Chef knife is actually fairly high maintenance for what it is. For being such a rugged knife, it requires fairly high maintenance. What I mean by high maintenance is that because it is a carbon steel knife, that you have to hand wash and keep it dry and all that jazz, and then you also have to oil it on a daily basis. But the nature of the 1095 steel is that it stains really easy. So even if you are meticulous about your knife care, and you, you stick to all the rules, right? Keep your knife dry during meal prep. You hand wash it, hand dry it, never touches the dishwasher, never. And you also oil on a regular basis. This knife still stained, and it also developed these rust spots that I had to buff out with pieces of steel wool. And then it also developed these like dark spots that are like pitting. And it's eventually just gonna get worse. So if you don't want to deal with any of this bullshit, I guess you can call it, I'd say you're probably better off with a stainless steel knife because it's much more user friendly. Now let's talk a little bit about edge retention because that is one of the most important topics, especially when it comes to daily maintenance. How sharp can this knife stay? Like how, how sharp can this knife stay? No, I meant how is the edge retention of this knife? The edge retention of this knife is very, very average. And I'd say sometimes I'd have to even say below average. Let me just give you an example, guys. Like I had to hone this knife twice in a 20 minute period of time. And I'm talking about normal meal prep. I'm not talking about heavy meal prep. This is just like regular onions, garlic, some chuck roast, you know, little things like that that I'm cooking for a regular weeknight dinner. And I had to hone this sucker twice. That's a lot. In order for you to keep this knife sharp, you have to hone it quite a bit. You have to strop it quite a bit. Let's talk a little bit about why the edge retention is not so great on this knife. That's because 1095, their peak edge retention is about a 65, 66 Rockwell hardness. But at that Rockwell hardness, it is very prone to chipping. Now, I totally understand why they heat treated this to 58 Rockwell hardness when they developed and, and kind of created the Serbian chef knife. It's because it doesn't have the chipping issue. But it does have an edge retention issue. But an edge retention issue is much easier to fix than a chipping issue. So let's draw this to a conclusion. Now, is this knife fun to cut with? Yes. Is it enjoyable to cut with? Yes. Yes and yes. And that's really about it, guys. Like, if you want to buy this knife and you really have your heart set on this sucker, I wouldn't pay more than AliExpress price for it. Like, if you do decide to support Kulina, oh, that just makes my heart hurt. Because I just don't like, I don't like supporting shady companies, man. Like, you're a grown-up, it's your money, you spend it however the fuck you want, but I just... Ah, oh, man, this, it's not even that I have anything against the company. You know, like, I have no hard feelings towards them, but it's just that I don't support shady companies. And not to mention, overpriced! Like, this, man, 90 bucks? For, like, 40 bucks, and you could have got it with a leather sheath? And then Kulina wants to charge you another 25 bucks for the sheath? Dude, that really burned me, man, when I saw they tried to charge 25 bucks for that leather sheath. And it came free with the knife on the other knife. Well, quote-unquote, free... Of course, you paid for it, but 40 bucks you could have got that combo, letter, letter sheath, and knife combo, okay? 
But like I said, if you want to support Kulina because you like them and you had good experience with them, your choice. I'm not I'm not telling you what to do. Now, if you do have your heart set on a cleaver style knife like this, like a daily cleaver, but you're still not sure about the Serbian chef knife, I actually have a really, really good contender, like a really good one that I want to introduce to you guys. And you guys are just going to have to stay tuned. I'll post a video next week to let you guys know which knife it is, so that way you guys have another option out there. I think that knife beats out this Serbian chef knife in almost every way. Um, fit and finish is one of the biggest ones. And it's a good looking knife. And I think it's actually cheaper than a Kulina knife too. Alright, that concludes the video. If you guys like the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me. It'll help me support all this craziness. And I will see you guys next week.